So in terms of uh, capacity building, um, we've seen benefits at uh, I think all of the centres uh, that I've seen. Um, personally we've seen um, a number of PhD students and MSc students and uh, obviously that's a start to their research career, that's really important. Uh, the Challenge programme has also set up uh, training courses uh, so uh, one course that was particularly important, uh, one, uh, an Imbrapa colleague, Sir Bertioli, went on and that was to do with phenotyping for drought. And that's a, that's a tricky thing to do and that was really important in terms of getting the research at, um, at Imbrapa set up for phenotyping our populations and, um, and uh, discovering um, what uh, wilds could be contributed and what were the limitations in a rigorous way. That was very important. That was uh, arranged, uh, that was done in France, in, um, in Montpellier, in Cirad, uh, that training course. I see quite a few things which, which I think the, the project is, going, is doing well. One of them is capacity building. I think that's absolutely vital because once people in the different countries are capacitated and are able to, you know, to take the f work forward, then it becomes sustainable. Because I think it's a different philosophy to giving. You know, nobody's being given anything, they are being taught. And, um, and that's a completely different ball game. So I think once you know, the conditions are being given and the knowledge is being given, and we can see there is, you know, everybody's very keen on it. They're keen on learning, they're keen on taking things forward. Then I think it becomes sustainable. So, and I think if the capacity building is, is, uh, is one of the key things, it carries on being done. So very early on in 2000 and 2008, in fact, um, I did a training in Montpellier. There was a phenotyping training course. Uh, and in 2009, I went to Icrasat um, and I was received by Vincent Vades for training specifically on peanut. So since then, we did some tests with the wilds, which are all deployed, and with the synthetics, which are tetraploid. And we can see how it, the limitations of phenotyping wilds. So we can see now that we need to go for the tetraploid and for the and for the for the other tetrapod lines to be able to make some uh, sense of what we're doing. Well, in terms of capacity building, was a, a major aspect of uh, of the project. So, as I was saying earlier, uh, we had a platform of partners having a different background, different skills, and everybody was not at the same speed at the beginning. And, and, and I would say it's still a work in progress. We understand that we work with national programs. In, uh, in Africa that have uh, suffered uh, a lot of uh, you know, the structural adjustment policies and we've got uh, aging people uh, not being fully replaced by young, young people uh, and so there's obviously uh, we've made progress but there's still I mean uh, obviously a lot more to, uh, to be achieved in, uh, in that respect yes. And the breeders in Senegal involved in the project have, have, have been trained to use the use of marker technology and now they can apply this in, in, the, in, a, in a lab in Senegal based in Serras that have uh, at least most of the facilities to conduct a basic marker assisted selection program and uh, they also have been trained with, with the GCP on, on on the use of, of the tools that are developed as, as part of the IBP. <laughs> I am a product of, the, of this project and I do my PhD in, on this and I also um, train one, one, two scientists. The, I, I, I train the, 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 breeder, the, the, the breeder of this project on how to use the marker on, on, on selection how to, to, to test their, their problem to genotype and another, uh, another guy that working on population development at Senegal. Yeah, the, the network aspect is, is critical because uh, I think that's uh, its strength and its weakness. Uh, its strength is to have uh, people working on many different disciplines and pretty much encompassing whatever is needed to really make progress in that crop. But at the same time, uh, there was sort of 
no sort of consensus uh, sort of work before the project uh, and so I mean, you could have people different working on different things with different interests uh, and so the while the strength in, is that sort of multiple sort of skills in different different things from the partner of the project uh, well the 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 challenge is really to make i mean those people work together toward the common goal so we find that's very rewarding to be able to be able to start the contribution of the genetic resources uh, and the molecular markers to where it's needed. And what we've seen um, in the last few years of the TL1, the from the phase one to the phase two, is that when we started developing the populations and developing the markers, everything was quite alien and quite foreign to the breeder. Because you know, you think, where will this take us? How can I benefit from it? And we can see now that things have devo developed much further. As sitting down and round the same table, we now we speak the same language. And we can see the breeder saying, "Well, can I use your markers?" And we say, "Well, can I use your populations?" You know, it's, it's, a, it's an exchange, and uh, and that's very rewarding. And I think that's uh, TL1 has a major, major role in making it happen. The tier one is, it's, it's, again, is a, a thing that's been developing and it's been very interesting to see. Because before we could see, again, different sides of, of the table speaking different languages and everyone coming together with the same objective and but not quite knowing where we will fit. And I think we can see now is we can see a lot of integration of different, different partners because basically the interests are the same, is disease resistance and drought. So we can see when the community is focused on a few objectives, you can see that the, there's a lot of exchange of information, exchange of material where law and legislation allows. Uh, and I think there's a lot of trust. Yeah, and I, I think that's a, a very important and basic thing to, to make a community develop. And I think it's a very friendly atmosphere and, uh, and, and all the information flows very freely and I think that's very, very important. The GL1 community is, is, very, is very rich and large. There is a lot of scientists with high capacity, high level. And I, I learn a lot by coming in, in the meeting, discussing with all the, the scientists and getting exchange on what they are doing, what we are doing, how, how to do better and things like that. There is a very nice community and dynamic community too.